Welcome to the Israel Answers series, connecting Israel, the Bible, and you. Join Susan Michael as she explores timely issues and current events from a scriptural perspective to equip the Christian world with a balanced and biblical response. Be sure to subscribe for future episodes, which will ignite your faith and bring the Bible to life in your everyday world. Now, let's join Susan with your Israel Answers. So we are here, we are still at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention where we are meeting all kinds of really interesting people. And so we're very happy to have with us today, Mimi Rosemarin, who is the, what is, you are Director of Global Development for Meir Panin. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what is Meir Panin? Mayor Panim is, in Hebrew, it means to brighten the face. Oh. And we are a network of five relief centers, primarily known for our restaurant-style soup kitchens around Israel. And we aim to be a safety net for everyone in their greatest time of need. Anyone can come in any day off the street, any faith, denomination, gender, and come in and have a nice warm meal, be taken care of like a member of a family. And we also offer any services we can to try to make them whole and help them move on with the difficult time in their lives. Wow. And why that, the, the name, the brightening of the mm -hmm. face, that's just the literal translation um, of, of the Hebrew term. What would it, um, so that's because when you're feeding them, it brightens. Exactly. <laughs> and we feel that um, we were created about 24 years ago with the goal of a different kind of soup kitchen that would nourish not only someone's body, but also their soul. Yes. And so the name yeah. Mayor Penny to brighten their face. We want people to come in and feel brightened and walk out with a straight back and confidence to take on the world and its challenges. And so you have five of these soup kitchens mm -hmm. uh, throughout Israel. That's right. And um, so tell me, after, how did October 7th affect your work? It affected everything in Israel, yeah. um, as you know, and as I'm sure you've spoken about a number of times in this mm -hmm. booth, even today. Yeah. Um, but at Mayor Penny, our branch managers and our management staff really took it upon ourselves quickly, even in the evening of October 7th, to do what we can do for those most affected by this terrible war. So for us, we give love through food. Um, so it meant going into the work, going into our branches on Saturday night, which we're usually not in, uh, cooking, preparing meals for troops that the 300,060 troops that were sent to reserves duties on October 7th, cooking meals to go to the front line before the IDF was able to pull up their supply chain, providing meals for refugee families fleeing the South, 120,000 families, people, left their homes in the south and 80,000 in the northern border. So since October 7th, we've been not only a soup kitchen and a network of soup kitchen and relief for people that are in poverty and, and facing food insecurity, but also trying to help those most affected by this awful war. Well, I want to just repeat a little bit of that to explain to our listeners that when Israel called up the reserves, they've never called up that many reserves yeah. in any time in history. So it was about 300,000, but they had 360,000 show up. So mm -hmm. people showed up to serve that had not even been called <laughs> up. I heard today a story of the oldest one to show up was 80 years old. And, um, but he showed up to volunteer uh, for the, the war. So um, in those first few days mm -hmm. and even weeks, the Israeli government, the military didn't have the supply lines Correct. in place. So they didn't have enough food even for these people. They didn't have sleeping bags. They didn't have flashlights. They didn't have enough protective gear, mm -hmm. uh, helmets, bulletproof vests. And so a lot of nonprofits kicked in then mm -hmm. to try to help uh, and fill that gap until the supply lines got. And even after the supply lines were able to supply, we know military grade oh, yes. food is not that good. And so I'm sure there's an ongoing need. I know uh, people go down and just do a barbecue for a whole division of soldiers mm -hmm. just to give them a hot, tasty meal. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for us, it shows our troops that 
even though they're not home, we're thinking of them at every moment yes. and we're doing everything we can to take care of them. Um, as I said, at Mayor Panim, our thing is that we give food and we know food and we know how a nice hot meal can help change someone's day yes. and perspective. So more than ever, the meals we're providing our troops, knowing that they're getting, you know, rations from the RV, even knowing that is all the more important because we want them to feel that continued support. Um, as they continue this awful war trying to defend us. And then are you working with the evacuated families? Because many of them, I mean, they don't have a home, a kitchen. They're in a hotel room. Maybe there's food at the hotel. Maybe they're on a kibbutz. Absolutely. So we have reached out to many of the hotels where the evacuated families are situated and seeing what we can do to help supplement what they're getting. Um, so the Israeli government has been amazing in being able to find temporary homes for the evacuated people, which we are so blessed to be able to do, mm -hmm. but it's still not home. And no. it's still, you know, I'm a mom, I have three boys and a husband and, and families like mine are staying in two rooms connected hotel rooms, and, and that's not easy. So what we've been doing is going in, um, doing also festive dinners. We did a movie night at a at a hotel a couple of weeks ago where we got all the kids fuzzy pajamas nice. and slippers. Um, and everything is really directed through our communities that are rallying around the people most affected. And we're very blessed that we're in a position where we have these networks and we know how to reach the people that need help. Well, and some of our listeners may not, you know, realize this either, but a lot of industries like the hotels or the places where they're housing the evacuees, so many people have been sent to the army and in the reserve, so they don't have enough workers Absolutely. to feed everybody or to, you know, on a daily basis, three meals a day or whatever. And so um, they may have a hotel room, but don't think that that means they're living in no. luxury or that they've got even the normal operations no, and of the I can hotel. Tell you, in my own perspective, as someone living in Israel, uh, we had biblical rain over the last month, which was amazing. Rain. The most rain, the most consecutive days of rain since 1991. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and also amazing is that we found three leaks in our roof. <laughs> <laughs> and we called our roofer. I sent him a text message to come by and he said, oh, I'm in reserves. Um, so I certainly, um, you know, personally, everyone in Israeli society is understanding and feeling it. He he did come when he had a break from Aww. reserves, which was very great, very generous of his time. Yeah. Um, but everyone is really feeling it, and and we're seeing an outpouring of people that want to help and be a part of it, helping and being a part of the solution and hope and faith, and it's been unbelievable. You know, biblically and in Israel, rain is a sign of blessing, of God's blessing. And uh, what a beautiful encouragement for the people of Israel to know that God's given them this tangible sign of his blessing on them while they go through such a difficult time. We, we wish that, you know, that there's never a difficult time, but we all face difficulties. But to have that encouragement that even that difficulty doesn't take us out of God's view. You know, he's still there with us. He's still there with Israel. He's strengthening your people and your country as you go through this difficult time. And he's using organizations like yours to provide that loving care and warm touch that just reminds people, you know, you're not in this alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, God's blessing our country is blessing us. We're able to bless you. And what an encouragement, you know, that is to the people. So you are obviously from New York, yes. but you do live in Israel. Yes, I grew up in Manhattan. Uh huh. And I lived in the Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, Maryland area okay. for several years. And in 2017, my husband and I sold our house, sold our minivan and <laughs> moved to Israel with our three little boys. Wow. And how has that been for you? It has been the hardest thing I've ever done, to be honest. It's hard to be an immigrant. It's hard to learn everything when you're 36 and, and you know one way of life. Uh, but I think especially during the last four months, it has really shown us that for the Jewish people, um, Israel is our future. And yes. even the people I've spoken to here at NRB have told me that they feel safer in Israel, even in the midst of a war, than they do here in America. Yes. So it has been so hard, and, and especially the last few months has been so emotional. Um, 
but we really feel like it's a blessing and it's where we're meant to be. Well, I always say, you know, hard does not mean bad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things are just hard, mm -hmm. but with God's help, we can overcome them. I'm sure learning Hebrew was mm -hmm. a challenge and navigating yes. daily life yes, in Hebrew is, is very hard. But um, but God will strengthen you and your family and, and um, see you through. Of course, you've been there now seven years almost seven in august so how's your hebrew my hebrew is okay good yeah it, i get by i say mistakes all the time um my little boy's hebrew is excellent with the perfect accent yes of course um, so the i children. love embarrassing them with my hard american accent <laughs> but what's a mom if not to embarrass <laughs> um but yes. it, it, you know every year we feel like we're improving and, and working on it and, and trying to integrate more yeah, well, wonderful. Well, it's wonderful hearing about your work there. And I hope that, do we partner with you? Good. So so our listeners can yes. uh, make a donation to ICEJ knowing yes, that we're partnering absolutely. with your work there. And the support from our worldwide community over these last few months yes. has been essential. Telling our patrons, telling the refugee families, telling the soldiers that people from around the world are opening their hearts and their wallets to support them truly makes them feel strengthened mm -hmm. and in so much of the media that we're seeing israel feels alone and these partnerships mean yes. so much well we as the international christian embassy jerusalem we do a lot of practical assistance like coming alongside a soup kitchen mm -hmm. like yours and helping prepare the packages uh maybe even cooking i don't know if they do that but but we do it with the message that we're doing it as Christians, and we mm -hmm. want the recipients to know we represent millions of Christians around the world who are praying for you and who have given donations so that we can bless you with this practically, because we know those words are an encouragement, and they probably help light up their face. Absolutely. <laughs> like it's my air does. does, and it's an important part of our ministry that we're able to give the aid with the words of encouragement to let them know they're not alone. They may feel very alone in these days, but they are not. So that's a large part of the calling of the ICEJ. So um, very, very nice to meet you, you today Thank and you hear about everything. your work. And uh, I look forward to coming and maybe volunteering one you. day. <laughs> Thank, right. you. Thank you. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Out of Zion with Susan Michael. Be sure to subscribe to Out of Zion now on Apple Podcasts, cpnshows.com, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen and learn. Out of Zion with Susan Michael is a production of ICEJ USA, all rights reserved.